welcome back. I've, um, it's been two or three days actually since I shampooed these Simply Sublime George Cleverly Buckskins and they look a bit a bit sorry and a bit hard and a bit patchy. That's, that's normal when you've shampooed Buckskin or Suede. Um, I think the, t the toe caps are all going to be good. I'm not convinced it's all, you know, we can see these dark p patches here. Um, it's quite, you know, they were quite dirty. They've never been, I don't think they've ever been cleaned. They've probably been rubbed with a brush or rubbed with a scotch Bright, but I don't think they've ever been shampooed in 50 years. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of brush up the nap because this, this is hard. It's, it's, it's dreadful looking. This is not what buckskin's supposed to look like. And I'm going to be using a scotch Bright um, or, you know, it's just a pan scrubber. You know, those, it's a nylon uh, pan scrubber. There's, there's two reasons. Firstly, um, it's, well, it's a nice sharp texture. It's, it's a good enough and a sharp enough texture. It's an ideal texture for brushing suede and buckskin. What happens, you get specialist suede brushes and they, they're like a toothbrush, um, but with brass, brass bristles. And they're very, very sharp and scratchy. And they sort of scratch and they pull, the, the, you know, the, they tend to stretch the, um, the, the, the skin fibres and make it almost hairy. It gets like a feathery texture. And um, that doesn't happen with this. The other thing is, particularly on a colour as light as these, um, a wire brush, uh, uh, well, they're not supposed to be wire, steel wire. They're supposed to be copper or brass, ideally. But copper and brass, it oxidises and um, it gets like a black surface and when you when you when you scrub it the black sort of oxidation um, ends up on the on the pale uh, the pale skin anyway let's um let's see if this has been enough i'm just going to turn the led light up a touch um it's 50 50 it either is enough or it isn't i suspect probably not but you know nothing to worry about i might worst case scenario i'll have to do it again so if these are yeah, it's looking a little bit patchy. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll just do it very carefully. I'll do the whole shoe, and it takes maybe ten or fifteen minutes. But um, yeah, these these old pan scrubbers. Well, it's, it's brand new actually. I say old. Yeah, I buy, I buy them in packets from, you know, the uh, supermarket. They're about forty pence for a packet of ten or something, and um, yeah, they're perfectly fine for. Suede and buckskin. Um, is that going to be enough? The toe is perfectly lovely. Um, that's absolutely perfect. <laughs> so you get like a, you get like a nap. It leaves, you know, it's there's a there's a right and a wrong way to brush the nap. Clearly not that way. So uh, it's a bit like stroking a cat. Um, you know, you sort of stroke with the way the hair grows. And, uh, you know, if you push it the wrong way, the cat jumps up. They don't like it at all. Um, yeah, it's very much, very much the same with these. And if they're well made, all of the, all of the nap will fall the same way. You would get some makers that would have it going in different ways, and you know, that would be just dreadful. You'd never get an even looking colour. But, uh, I don't know, perhaps uh, perhaps these are going to be enough. Not really sure. Can't decide. They really are truly lovely, though. But it'll take a good sort of 10 or 15 minutes to do each shoe, just carefully. I think, I think that area is still dirty. Yeah. I think it is. I think the the foam it's it's lifted the surf you know, the, the the dirt that was deep down. It's lifted it to the surface, but it hasn't brought it away entirely. No, it definitely hasn't. It def they definitely need redoing. But um, you know that's okay. Just uh, I'm not going to shampoo them straight away. Actually, again, I've already done that once. I need to address the issues with the heels. Yeah, that's, uh, they definitely need doing a second time. They're just not quite, you know, the toe cap is perfect. Absolutely perfect. But I just, it's just a bit dark and a little, looks a bit, yeah, it's just a bit dull here. It just looks a little bit patchy, um, which is no surprise. We could, you know, this one, 
um, yeah, we can see it there. It doesn't look quite so bad on this one, but um, I have to I have to do them both twice. I can't just um, I can't just do the one. What I'll do, I'll go all the way over the shoe. I'll spend a good ten or fifteen minutes. I'll do the tongue as well, Re you know, rub them, and any 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 dirt that's on the surface will be brushed away by the Scotch Bright, and I'll simply come back and I'll I'll repeat the process with the foam, and um, a second application will get the whole shoe looking as absolutely glorious. As the um, as the toe cup. Now I mentioned the issues with the heels. Um, they they've had a brand new a brand new heel fitted, which I knew about. But when when I received them, the heels just didn't look right. And then the the angle is completely wrong. You know they they don't. Um, and I couldn't understand why a shoe that's had so little wear had ground through its heels so much that the whole heel stack needed replacing. I really was completely lost by that and there's, a, there's another pair and I, clearly the, the you know the whoever repairs these had, had repaired them had, had repaired the whole heel stack not just because the the angle's wrong if you look at one of my previous videos yeah the the shoe doesn't sit it doesn't sit properly on the, on, the, on the pavement the only bit that touches the pavement is that sort of about 10 15 millimeters there obviously the uh, the bottom of the sole touches and this pop is whoever's done it has made a complete hash and got the um got the angles all completely wrong. So I'm going to have to rework this. I have to pull the whole lot off. And the, you, the heels are built up in stacks. They're about sort of four or five millimeters leather, but you're supposed to sort of taper it towards the front and thicker towards the back so that it actually sits on the pavement properly rather than just that little bit there. But that's something I'm going to address. And um, I'm, I, you know, I work out how to do it. I've seen it done. I'm not a cobbler. I'm a hairdresser, but you know, I'm absolutely sure I can do a better job than this. The other thing is, it's it's very very clumsy. It's just completely slab sided, and it's simply it's simply too thick. It just looks bulky. And the other thing is, it's straight across there. It's uh, George Cleverly would always finish his in a semicircle around here, quite yeah, quite deep. I would imagine that bit there would finish probably about the tip of the gold, you know, quite a quite a deep sort of semicircle, and um, the obviously the heel would start at exactly the same sort of width as the very edge of the welting, but he generally sort of tapers them in. This is just a clumsy slab sided. It it looks quite ghastly. So it's um, I did notice it wasn't right, but now I've had a really good look and I've realised there's a lot wrong. So. They, they will need sort of tapering in all the way around not dramatically probably just you know that the the, the the top bit will stay and it will it will just be filed in very slightly just i don't know maybe two or three millimeters from from top to the bottom so it just so it will taper this way that would also it will also taper that way as well it'll just be a lot more delicate it won't be a slab sided affair and I think the other one's just just exactly the same. Yeah, these are truly truly gorgeous, um, but this hash of a heel, it's bloody great clumsy thing. You know, it's definitely supposed to have a. Um, I've got several George Cleverleys bespoke, and some of them have barely been worn, and they're absolutely perfect. So I'll simply copy. Ex I'll take the dimensions and the measurements and the profiles, and I'll count exactly how many nails, exactly where it puts the nails, where you know how close to the edges in millimeters, etc. I'll get it completely right. I won't just bash them in willy nilly, and you know that's a clumsy mess. It's it's definitely supposed to have a have a semicircle cut out, but um, it is what it is. You know they're glorious, glorious shoes. They're definitely worth sort of the little bit of extra effort that that's going to be. But um, it will be a big effort for me because, as I say to you, I'm not a shoemaker, and I'm going to have to sort of do a few practice runs on something else, I buy all the materials. I don't have all the heel stack leather, and yeah, I could send it somewhere else, and I'm sure I could, I'm sure somebody might be able to do a decent job. But um, you know, the person that uh, sold these shoes trusted somebody to do a decent job, and I guess paid a huge sum of money for this. Quite frankly, a garbage job. It's all gunged up with. What's he stuck on the side of it? Some sort of ghastly wax. But anyway, they're perfectly 100% savable. Yeah, that will all just get peeled off, thrown away, and start again from scratch. And they will be perfect. They're just glorious, glorious shoes. I'm so thrilled to have them in my collection. And uh, and yeah, I do look forward to wearing them. But due to the issue with the heel, it's going to be some something longer um, before I'm able to get them on my feet. 
than, than, than uh, you might think. I'm not prepared to tolerate that heel and just wear them as they are. Um, it will prematurely wear that heel down. But what it will also do, it will put unnecessary stress on the welt. Because when you stand, that makes good contact and this bit makes good contact. And when you walk, the heel will press down and it will bend. It will bend the welts. It will sort of bend the shoe forwards. It will put unnecessary stress in this particular piece here. I'm just not prepared to do it. I'm not prepared to wear them when they're not right. I'll just simply wait until, um, you know, it's everything's perfect. But, uh, you know, the, the next job I'm going to do is I'll clean them again, as we can see. There's no, there's no point in continuing to rub and rub and rub. Because if I just keep rubbing, the fibres will get long. I don't want them to get long. I'll just shampoo that out rather than rub it out. But they're just truly stunning. I'm really, really thrilled with them.